Hello students, this is Fazan Mirza. We are discussing malaria, an infectious disease today. Malaria is caused by a pathogen which is a plasmodium. Figure 10.5 that you can see here, it represents to you a blood film seen under the microscope at 1300 magnification. You can see the red blood cells and inside these are the normal red blood cells. This pale yellow is the, is the plasma at the back and these ring-like structure, these are the plasmodiums which are there present in the blood film of this person. So this person is being can be diagnosed with the uh, disease of malaria on the presence of this these these pathogens, these malarial plasmodiums in his or her blood. This is the diagram of uh, of an electron micrograph. Basically, this is uh, this is highly magnified. So in this is a red blood cell. You can see this is a red blood cell, and each of these inside these these structures, these are the plasmodium, the malarial parasites. Then this is an electron micrograph, and this is a this is a light microscope image. So you can see the stark different difference, and this is the this is the false colors image. So this has been colored false. So these, this, you can see the structures of the plasmodium very clearly. And you can also obviously see that the, the, how the red blood cell is there. So the normal red blood cells can be seen. And apart from that, you can also see the plasmodium inside the red blood cells of these. In the electron micrograph, you can see the nucleus of the malarial plasmodium is very clear, which actually tells you that the malarial plasmodium is a eukaryote and it is having eukaryotic features. This is not a bacterial disease. This is a disease caused by a eukaryote, which is a plasmodium, better known as protoctists. Protoctists are unicellular eukaryotes. They live in the red blood cells and the red blood cell would soon, here it would rupture. And when it would rupture, plasmodium would travel in plasma free and enter more red blood cells and it would eventually conceal itself from white blood cells. So you can see that at the moment in this image or here or here, these, these pathogen, these malaria plasmodiums are very well hidden from white blood cells because a white blood cell would be somewhere here in the blood and they can't really see. So when the red blood cell gets ruptured, this malaria plasmodium comes out, it stays in plasma for, a certain, for some time. And during this time, it is very well uh, visible to the white blood cells. So white blood cell can go and attack it, but soon it will hide in the new red blood cells and it would cause the red blood cells to get ruptured. So this red blood cell is just soon about to explode. So there's the end and burst actually. Uh, so the red blood cell would be released, not explode, burst. That's a better term. So yeah, uh, the, the, the drugs which are used for the treatment of malaria, these include quinone and chloroquine. And uh, these are basically used as profile. Also, they are also used as prophylactic drugs. Prophylactic drugs are prevented drugs which are taken before, during and after the visit in an endemic area. And apart from these quinone, quinone and chloroquine, te uh, treatment can also be used, uh, can also be using mefloquine. Mefloquine is an expensive um, alternate but it is used for for malarial patients who are having resistant um, pathogen which cannot be cured with quinone or chloroquine. The global pattern of the disease shows to you that it is mainly present in the these regions, the warm regions. Africa, in Africa, the the country, the, the entire region of Africa, so it's, it's the this entire continent, the entire region of Africa, it is extensively uh, having malarial load and this is said to be that it said to it is said that uh, africa the african population is constantly facing malaria so malaria is an endemic in africa repeated infections of malaria are fatal because of extensive loss of red blood cells and severe anemia people in africa they are uh, they are they have they have shown to be evolved they are they are actually evolving to uh, to uh, this uh, this infection and what is seen in africa is that now the majority of population is uh, is of genotype hba hbs they are the carriers of sickle cell anemia and they are resistant to malaria so anyone who is having hba hbs condition who is a carrier of the sickle cell trait this is this allele is for the normal hemoglobin this is for the sickle cell hemoglobin so if a person is an as a carrier of this this trait the person is very well resistant to malaria. So people in Africa who are HBHBS, they do not die from malaria. So yes, this is uh, this is a this is a big achievement because of this HBS allele 
uh, this uh, this has over the years this uh, this ended up helping people to uh, just fight back this infectious disease and actually come up with uh, strategies with which they can actually do not get infected by the pathogen at all. The status of malaria in Pakistan, you can see that this is Karachi here. So you can see that most urban areas are, are shaded this shade of pink. And you can see that this is the feature of uh, this is the this is how prevalent the disease is in these regions. But if you look at the at the uh, uh, more regions who are not very well developed as the urban centers, there is a high incidence of malaria there. Most regions of Balochistan and KPK, you can probably just see here. Uh, basically, uh, if we discuss the basic features of malaria, it is caused by four different pathogens. All are Plasmodium, Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium malariae, Plasmodium ovale, Plasmodium vivax. The vector is female Anopheles mosquito and this female Anopheles mosquito, when it feeds on the blood meal, it, the blood meal of human beings, these are, this is rich in proteins. So when the female Anopheles mosquito is, is feeding on your blood, it releases an anticoagulant in its sting. So it's, while it's, it's feeding on your blood, it, your blood will not clot. So it keeps on feeding in, on your blood. And in doing so, it can either take up these, these pathogens from your blood if you already are suffering from malaria or probably if it was already carrying these pathogens, it can just deliver this to your blood while doing so. So a uh, mode of transmission is insect vector as discussed. Uh, this is female Manopheles mosquito. The global, global distribution I've already covered. The incubation period is about a week to a year. The site of action is mainly in human liver, red blood cells and brain. Red blood cells and liver are the main target initially, but if the, if the, if the pathogen reach brain, this can be fatal. Clinical features include fever, anemia, nausea, headache, muscle pain, shivering, sweating, and an enlarged spleen due to destruction of red blood cells. Method of diagnosis is due to, is just by a blood smear that can be, that can be seen under a microscope. Uh, so what's happening in malaria? The malarial plasmodium, if we, if we just go through the, uh, the features of this disease, that how is, is, is it being transmitted? So the life cycle of malaria plasmodium is important here. And just to recall, this is not caused by a bacteria. It's not a prokaryote. It's a plasmodium, a protoctus, a eukaryote, which is unicellular. So there are two stages in which the malarial parasite lives. So uh, the, it's basically living an asexual life and a sexual life as well. The asexual uh, stages occur in the human host. And when they are occurring in the human host, these are occurring in the liver and red blood cell mainly. The pathogen multiplies inside the red blood cell. The red blood cell bursts. Several new plasmodium are released into the plasma and when they travel in plasma, they go on to enter more red blood cell and the cycle is repeated. Hemolysis is the term which we use to our, say, for mentioning the bursting of the red blood cell. So this is what's occurring. Now, the sexual cycle of this pathogen occurs in the mosquito, female and office mosquito, as it would bite the human who's having harboring this pathogen. So it would be transferred to the asexual, the asexual stage, stages will be passed on to the mouth parts of the female and office mosquito as, as it was feeding onto the blood of this individual. Now these these uh, these pathogens which are there in the in its mouth part they would move to its gut and in the gut they would form gametes and the gametes would fuse and they would form infective stages they would come to the salivary glands and then they are present in the sting at the proboscis of the insect so the next time this insect will go and bite on or sting the new person who is not suffering from uh, from malaria it would transfer these into that new host. As already discussed, I've, I've covered the, uh, the status of this disease, the clinical features here, how to control the disease. The, the basic way is to probably just can, you just can recall. This is most of, most of this is general knowledge. So malaria, basically, if you just cover up the breeding grounds of mosquitoes, since this is caused by a vector. And if you just cover, if you just remove the breeding grounds of mosquitoes, so where the malarial disease can be very well controlled. There are two biological control measures that can be used. You can you can stock the ponds and 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 uh, oh, and water bodies with uh, with permanent, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, living beings such as fishes, which are guppies. Guppies are fishes which eat the larvae of mosquitoes. So if the mosquito, the female and offspring mosquito, is lying laying eggs there, uh, guppies would eat those. So another way, another way is just spring a preparation of bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis. This bacteria is a human-friendly bacteria. It kills mosquito larvae and it's non-toxic to other life forms as well. 
So these are the two biological ways in which the malaria, the, the, the breeding grounds of the malarial vector can be controlled. The reasons for why worldwide there is still a concern of malaria, mainly there is an increase in the drug resistant form of malaria, which cannot be cured by quinone or chloroquine. And the alternate drugs are very well expensive. Then there is an, there's an increased proportion of cases being reported by P. falciparum. This is a very severe uh, malarial causative agent, so the disease is difficult to cure. Then again, malaria, the vaccine cannot be developed. Later on, when we are discussing vaccine, we'll discuss this later, why it is not very, not very convenient to make a vaccine against malaria. And then there are constantly increased, increasing number of epidemics because of the climatic change, environmental changes, which are favoring the breeding of these mosquito globally. And finally, migration of people from areas where malaria is endemic for economic and political reasons. When they come, they bring the disease with them and all female office mosquito already traveling in that or already present in that other region of the of the of the globe would just become a vector of this disease and transmit it to the locals there. This is what's occurring in malaria. Discussing the, their disease measles, measles is caused by a morbidly virus. It's not caused by a bacteria or a protoctus. It's a highly contagious disease. It's the pathogen enters the body through the respiratory tract and initially the symptoms are flu-like. In measles, the virus which enters the body, it multiplies inside the cells of the upper respiratory tract, the nasal cavity and trachea mainly. There are no symptoms for about 14 days. And after the initial uh, initial infection, a rash of white patches will appear in the in the in the in the oral cavity. And other symptoms such as runny nose or a cough or watery eyes are are, are they may develop uh, early in the early in this disease. Treatment is basically just uh, you just uh, give symptomatic treatment. You ask the person to take a lot of bed rest and medicines are given to, to lower the fever. There's no specific medication for treatment of measles. It is a self uh, limiting disease. It heals on it upon uh, 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 it heals by itself. If you have a good immune system and a good support from from these medications that that help you keep functioning. So you take a lot of rest and you recover from the disease. There are not many complications reported from this disease. Most of the time it, it just cures by itself after 10 days. In rare cases, it is seen that the disease can become a can lead to complications such as pneumonia or ear infection or sinus infection or, or probably the brain damage, which can and, and these are just the complications which are not very well um, reported in many cases, but are seen. That's it from my side. Thank you so much.